following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a quick look at the German DAX, still in an uptrend, along with uh, our markets as people are using risk off and uh, trying to buy everything in sight. We also are going to take a look at the FTSE, also going higher. Very, very interesting. I wanted to share with you the next chart, which comes from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange on their database to show you what happened to open interest yesterday with that big move in the S&P into new high ground, closing into new high ground. And you'll notice here in the lower arrow that the open interest dropped on that day. That's not a good sign, folks. That means people are leaving the market. And uh, who would be leaving a market making new highs like that? Would that, would that be the, uh, the neophyte trader taking profits up there? I don't think so. But anyway, that's what we're watching. We're going to keep an eye on that as we go through. We're still watching the same thing in the Treasury notes and Treasury bonds. The same thing has happened. Open interest has been dropping for two weeks now in Treasury bonds and Treasury notes. Yesterday, there was a slight increase in Treasury note uh, open interest, but the Treasury bond open interest dropped again. So there's a little divergence happening there. The big news, I think, overnight, and by the way, we do have Bill Meridian from Cycles Research. Uh, we'll be calling in today in about 22 minutes, and we'll be able to chat with him about gold and oil and stocks and Trump and anything else that you might want to uh, that you might want to cover. But we had a big thing happen yesterday that we talked about, and that was the fact that we had this uh, long-term line of resistance in the gold that was just totally shattered at 1365. We've been saying this here for quite a while while and uh, it does look good and the open interest in the gold is extremely bullish folks in both days uh, Wednesday and Thursday big increases in open interest a lot of players in there so this is not going to give up its ghost uh, you know very very easily I just wanted to share with you uh, what happened uh, uh, in the market you'll notice here this was updated as of uh, early this morning and I just wanted to be able to show you that uh, this is a longer term chart in gold uh, going back over the last four years, you can see we have double ABCD patterns up there near that 1420 level. Uh, that could be, you know, quite interesting if that's going to be the case. So what I was doing last night is I was watching it because once it broke above those highs at 13 uh, uh, last night at yeah at, at uh, 1320 uh, was it or 1365 70. I mean it just took off and really took off. You'll note you'll notice here that uh, let's just oh dear did I get this put in wrong? Just a second, just a second here we'll get it up here. Here it is. You'll notice that uh, it was around uh, 11 o'clock at night. New York time when we hit that 1416, which was the high. Then the market backed off 30 bucks and look where it stopped. Right exactly at the 382, the low we had made down at 1335. It ran straight up $80, backed off to exact 38% level, and then rallied up to 1405, 1404 and a half. And my assumption is that we're going to be making an ABCD pattern here that will take gold down to that original break off, breakdown around 1367. That would really be a nice one. And the reason for that being is it's going to be the first one we've had in gold in a, <laughs> a long time. So pay attention to that one, folks. This is one of uh, the ones that uh, I'm watching uh, uh, on my watch list. So we, we need to watch that uh, relatively closely, I would think. So that's a major one is to just to keep an eye on that one. Uh, one of the questions that uh, someone asked over the weekend or, over, or yesterday was uh, what was happening with silver. And if you'll take a look at silver, uh, this is an uh, interesting market, you know, not anywhere near new highs, but uh, you'll see here that we made a beautiful Gartley pattern up there at 1553. The high was 1555 and a half. 
We got all the way down to 1327 last night, and uh, so far it's just been chopping around. This could be a major Gartley sell signal, folks, because uh, it is a absolute perfect ABCD. As 20 minutes said, defy human nature, do yourself, you know, and do the work yourself. Add B and C together. Add B, 1515, C, 1460. Add those two together. Take that sum and subtract it from the low at 1427 and bada bing bada boom it gives you 1551 so it's certainly done that and it was much much weaker than gold all along, than the whole time and also platinum is you know can't even find its way out of a paper bag so those are telling us that these markets are they're very very active and they're going to continue to be active folks we're going to see some wild stuff we haven't begun to see the things in the stock market that we're going to see because it's just a uh, you know everybody is just risk off and they just keep uh, buying and buying and buying and maybe that's the right thing to do but uh, all I can say is it's going to be interesting and the old Chinese curse may you live in interesting times and that's one of the things that we don't uh, we don't want to do because that is a Chinese curse. Um, I do have a human interest story that I probably should share here. One of my dear friends in California, John Raffoni, he's the one who I lived with during my divorce during 1985 and part and 86. We had a beach house there in Avila Beach, uh, uh, California. If you want to uh, Google it, just go to 80 San Antonio, Avila Beach, California. You'll see it. It overlooks the Pacific there in that beautiful little cove. And John was a owner of the several uh, Walston and Company offices. He was a friend of Ross Perot. Uh, John was in a really bad auto accident a few weeks ago. He's recovering now. And I was talking to John, and who would be in the room there that flew all the way from Texas to visit him other than uh, Ross Perot himself? And uh, they're just about the same age. John is 85, and I think Ross is a little bit older, but he's a super nice, good old Texas boy. And uh, it was really, I spent well over an hour just chatting about all the fun stuff that we had done through the years. But uh, he really got banged up, and he's uh, got two knee replaced, a hip replaced. He's on a pacemaker. So uh, having a lot of money don't always mean a whole lot, folks, but uh, super nice guy. By the way, his daughter, Deidre, was one of the people that started Kate Spade. And uh, she made hundreds of millions of dollars, and uh, that's it. Uh, you know, it's really cool. Anyway, there's something big happening in the, I'm going to switch over to hogs for just a second here because take a look at this hog chart. We got this from one of our friends out there in Arizona, and you'll notice here – that the uh, the big volume spike that we had here as the hogs get down to that 8050 level again that's below the 78% level and it's a tad below the three drive to a bottom pattern but hogs could be bottoming in here folks and the reason why I say that is we're seeing a big difference between the August hogs and the December hogs and I will that's a far out month of course but I'll be covering that in the newsletter uh, over the weekend you know to get a better eye on what we think is going to be uh, happening uh, with that. So let's pay let's pay attention to that. Uh, we got uh, Bill Meridian will be my guest here in 15 minutes. Uh, if you want to call in, it's 877-927-6648. If you have any questions about uh, any stock, gold, silver, how to make uh, wild crow taste pretty good, any of those things that we can try to help you with, you know, give us a call here. The last chart I want to post here before we come to the next segment comes from our good friend Norm Winsky. The man in the middle, the man in the middle is Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, and Norm's uncle is on the right hand, left hand side. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, everybody. Good job. That was my associate producer. Uh, he's uh, here on a uh, sabbatical here. Let's take a quick look at some of these market folks. Uh, one of the things we want to look at that I think is really important is this TLT chart. It's a couple days old, but let's take a look here. You'll be able to see here that uh, we've made new highs in TLT. We've made new highs in notes and we're doing that with a drop in open interest i will keep repeating this until they put that final thing on my tombstone uh, that uh, he didn't change his mind until the very end and even then he didn't compound number three compound number three that was compound number two marshall thank you for asking <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's go into this. This uh, the open interest is dropping, prices are going up. That means this market is weakening. That's the structure of the of the commodities. These are commodities; they're actual contracts. You have to have a buyer and a seller. If you don't have a buyer and a seller, there's no change in open interest. If they get a buyer and a seller, it's one at a time. So that's it. Anyway, keep a uh, keep watching this because when this thing turns and. I'm not sure it's going to do it in my lifetime, but if it does, and if it does, it's going to be uh, quite nasty uh, in my opinion. Someone's asked me the question, what would be the possibility of gold having a uh, you know big correction here? Well, the possibility is quite high. I mean, I posted that long-term weekly chart. We've got some patterns up here around that 14 20 level but folks all this stuff happens in gold right tell me something this doesn't you know stop a little common sense okay you got gold trading all day long six o'clock in the morning till two three in the afternoon very heavily right what does it do it bounces around between 1365 and 1348 then when there's no liquidity in the market the market runs from 1365 to 1420 and they do that with very very i mean a small amount of contracts 
I mean, it really is. But the open interest in the gold is very positive. They're pumping it in there, 10,000 contracts a day. So the players are there. The players are not in the notes and bonds. They're leaving. And they're leaving in the S&P, too. I, I just you know pointed out they were down 2%. That's not a good sign. But, you know, the market still goes up because of short covering. So who knows? Anyway, we did make new highs in these things. So we're going to be watching it, you know, very, very closely in here for these next few days uh, to see what's going on. The U.S. dollar still acting okay. Uh, I believe that we've got a chance for some pretty good action here uh, in the euro. We got above that 113 level that's really good. But the one that I've really got on my on my watch list has come down to the 78 percent level you'll notice that uh, we've been coming down quite sharply and now this is the weekly and i wanted to, to get to just above 107 and that's where we got to last night we got to 107 and change this was my post from sunday and i believe that that might be a pretty good bottom so there could be a churn coming in some of these things as far as risk on and risk off so we'll be able to see if that uh, is going to be the case. Mr. Z is talking about the, the trading in gold this week. It really has been, you know, quite unusual and phenomenal because once we went above 1365, folks, there was no resistance there at all. And it, you know, went up above it, came back to it once. And then last night, of course, it, it just absolutely exploded and got up to uh, 1416 and then dropped 30 bucks, stopped exactly at the 382 level as I posted. And I posted that as it was happening. And I know that some of the folks were able to take advantage of that and quickly rallied 15 bucks to the exact 61% retracement. And then now it's just chopping around. The ideal situation, folks, is if you you we have a potential now and I'm going to post this again because it's that I think it's that important you'll be able to see it if you understand anything about the ABCD patterns that we look at you'll notice here that uh, that last rally we had up there at 1404 that's exactly 61 percent retracement so if the A level is at 1416 and your B level is at 1385 all you have to do is to you know AB plus uh, a B plus C minus A is going to take you right down to the old breakout level at uh, roughly 1375, and that's the place where you'd really like to uh, maybe take a position in gold because that'll be a really nice A B C D, and we'll be able to see. We'll be able to watch that for sure. Mr. Z's pointing about how the volume in the thing was really running last night. It was really, uh, really, really quite amazing. That, that takes, folks, that when you see volume like Mr. Z is posting there, like 40,000 contracts, that's not 500 here, 500 there, 400 here, 500 there. That's one huge player out there. And uh, so, uh, well, it could be a combination of two or three, but 40,000 contracts within a, an hour range. I mean, that's, that's a lot of volume coming in there. So uh, that, that's, that's, all, that's important stuff. So uh, the open interest is going to be watched again tonight because if we had a big drop in open interest last night, and the figures from that move between 1375 um, and uh, 1390 and 1416 uh, is not going to be in uh, and not be until tonight because then you'll then you'll see because it's already they've already given those figures out by the time that was uh, that was done so you got to pay you know relatively close attention to that as uh, as you're watching it so uh, this is a real key one to uh, pay attention this has been a very um, eventful week with the federal reserve and all the stuff that's going on the price is breaking out uh, the fact that the grain stopped going up for at least a tiny little bit in here and uh, the currencies are you know rocking and rolling again so we've got to we got to focus on the euro we got to focus on that japanese yen and keep an eye on that dollar index because that's where the key is that's where the, that's where they keep scores with the money and as old Bernstein and Woodward said follow the money so let's uh, sort of watch that because uh, if that dollar starts to weaken as Tom O'Brien talked about on his show early this morning it's going to make our goods cheaper and that'll promote the uh, you know buying and selling of grains and stuff like that but frankly, folks, the way that crop is looking right now in corn, soybeans, and, and even in wheat, wheat is the weak sister, that uh, they're going to have to buy no, what, no matter what because we're, we're, we're starting to see a potential really disastrous crop. The reason why it's got such a late start now, if it doesn't bloom like it's supposed to, and then we get an early frost or too much rain in the fall, uh-oh, then, then we got problems where we could be looking at 
you know, sixteen, seventeen dollar beans, seven, eight dollar corn, and you know, nine, ten dollar wheat, and the rest of the world's still going to have to uh, still have to buy it. So we'll be able to uh, you know watch that as we as we go through and look at uh, some of these. We, we've had a little bit of divergence in the stock indices, whereas the the New York Stock Exchange index and the Russell have been a little bit weaker, but the Dow Jones, of course. Very, very bullish, and of course, E mini bopping up into new high ground, which was uh, done just the other day. So, we'll see how it all works out as we go through. But there's an interesting period here. Uh, the price of the, of the coffee is holding up relatively well. This is for Ruby, and so it looks like it's making a pretty good bottom in here. And I think we could easily, if coffee turns like it's supposed to here, uh, we could easily see coffee up around the uh, 113, 114 level again without too much trouble. So those are the main ones that we're looking at. If you get a break in the corn, in December corn, new crop corn, down to that uh, 420 level, I would certainly take a look at that because that's going to be a 382 retracement. Uh, it'll also be an ABCD pattern. So watch that one. That's another one. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for Bill Meridian of Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria on the line. Bill, how are you doing? Yeah, well, hello from uh, New York. Hey, I know where that is. What are you doing? Just yep. checking out on your property up there? Uh, yeah, I'm sitting in it right now. So. <laughs> hey, thank you for sending me the great pictures. I, I posted the one from the uh, Statue of Liberty. Bill was out on a, uh, evidently one of the uh, boondoggle uh, yachts uh, uh, with some folks and stuff. You want to tell the folks what kind of a – you were going to a cannabis uh, convention, wasn't it, Bill? Yeah, well, my two uh, friends – run these uh these shows they're boston los angeles new york it's the uh, -huh. uh hemp and cannabis exposition it was in the javits center and mm -hmm. they have a cruise on friday nights which is uh it's a really interesting mix of people i think this is what, what the old gold rush might have looked like because you have all sorts of people there and i i can just tell you that the number of exhibitors was up 35 percent over last year and this year you saw some big names there. Last year I saw some legal, uh, some companies that I did not, uh, that I had never heard of, accounting and law firms. Mm -hmm. And this time there were some bigger ones there. So they're getting more serious about it. And there were people there selling lights to grow marijuana, packaging equipment. Uh, one guy was selling safes. And I said, what are you doing here? And he said, well, <laughs> most banks will not accept the proceeds of the marijuana business. And I said, oh, do you give away uh, rifles with this too? Um, and then there are people with, uh, of course, the uh, CBC infused makeup, candy, and I mean, everything you could think of. Do I got some free sample dog biscuits with CBC in it and uh, CBC oh, and everything. And... Uh, <laughs> When you talk to the people, you get the impression that it's like some, uh, somewhat like a Hollywood movie set. One of the guys told me some of these stocks trading on the New York Stock Exchange, he said he knows them. He said the fundamentals are paper thin. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, you know, the la a year ago, I came to the conclusion with a, one of the guys there that, uh, you know, of course, that everybody's waiting for a federal, the federal government to uh, do something. And... Uh, give them a mandate and um, uh, this year I mean I, I the impression I have is that um, once this is legalized the big companies are like a giant that will uh, step on all these little companies I don't think they have much of a chance and last Friday I was out at dinner and uh, my friend told me that her one of her son's friends bought 300 acres in Oregon or in Washington State to grow cannabis, but then found out that already at the behest of very large companies, a number of very restrictive rules and regulations have been passed to keep the small guys out. Wow. So, so I don't think these little companies have much of a chance. And uh, I met um, uh, one lady from Columbia. She's got a degree in industrial engineering. And... Uh, we met after the conference, and I sat down, and I said, how is anybody going to make any money? She said, well, that's what I'm trying to figure out, too. And uh, she's got the licenses for distribution in Colombia and Puerto Rico. And I said, uh, well, okay, but um, it seems to me that uh, Altria, which is the old Philip Morris, I, I'll bet they're all ready to pounce on this. Mm -hmm. And by the way, wow. did you get my charts yet? Because I just emailed them to you again. <laughs> Uh, let me double check, Bill. I didn't, but I have a question for myself. Are, yep. do you, are you following the cannabis socks at all? Uh, do you have a, 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 any feeling on any of those? Someone's already asked that question, uh, and no, I was wondering I, I, if I really, uh, this, this is. I'm trying to get a handle on their fundamentals, and I just uh, I, right. I don't know whether these things are um, are just speculations or whether there are some solid companies. But you know, I keep my thought is. Uh, the guys who actually have the acreage and are already growing are the ones that I would concentrate on. And, uh, you, you know, I met people there who were in uh, uh, in management. I'll ask them what they did. They said, well, we help the co co you know, small companies incorporate. We help them incorporate and get them through. I said, well, uh, that's okay. And I went to uh, some other guys. They have um, spectrographic analysis they can determine if any pests are going to grow in the crop. And it goes right up to uh, satellite and through the Internet. And if it detects any sort of pest, it immediately relays back uh, 
and tells you what the pest is and what steps to take. And I was thinking to myself, when I was on Wall Street in the 70s as a fundamental analyst, I followed big food companies, and I think they already have all this technology. So that's the type of thing uh, that I experienced in this, you know, cannabis-infused candy. It seems like the big, big confectioners have an edge there, and you know, same wow. thing with the makeup with the makeup companies. All I have to do is they've probably already looked into it. How do you, you know, put CBC into your mm -hmm. And uh, wherever you go now in health food stores, you're seeing uh, a CBC hemp section. And I've mm -hmm. been told by um, I've been told by several people. He said, well, "We know people making a hell of a lot of money right now." I said, "Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out who's legitimate and who's not." And uh, yes. those pic those pictures I sent you, by the way, uh, that wasn't Tina Turner that I was with. That's I, was, a I was joking with you, Bill. <laughs> she, she's a publicist in New York who just happens to look very – she's from Antigua, so she looks very exotic. And the singer is the daughter of the guy running on the shows. That's Siobhan, who's a backup singer for Madonna. Um, so it was quite an event, and I really uh, – you know, my guess is this is going to be legalized. And there's going to be one huge rush, and I think the thing to do is to look at the big companies. The safest route is to look at the big companies that are already moving in or ready to move in because they're going to push all the little guys aside. But there'll be a few, maybe one in 50, one in 100 uh, companies that do something unique, which is what I'm looking for. Wow. Will and, they ever uh, have this stuff for old people like me? You know, I've never tried any of that stuff Uh well, I don't Maybe know. Maybe I should just to see what it's out. like, you know. <laughs> oh well. Hey, listen. Let's get back to the markets here. We want to talk about the oil market first. Uh, what's your what's your what's your overall feeling here of what's happening in the oil market? We're up around what 57 and change now. Uh, any particular feeling that you see here in the in the oil market that could make it move either direction? Oh uh, yeah. By the way, did you get the charts yet? Yes, I'm already got the first one up. Oh, okay. Ready, All right. Whatever. Let me let yeah. me move to my charts then. Um, this was a note that I sent out, so we can just. Uh, well, first of all, let me just state that um, I think this is very important if you're studying this type of analysis. But the the graphs that I use most most of the time come from my own own software, and. You have to remember it is based on a sine wave, which is a circle, and as we know, orbits of the planets are elliptical, so there are two types of cycles, circular and elliptical, and generally, most of the time, you can get by with the circular trends two-thirds of the time, three-quarters of the time, but uh, you can't – there are certain elliptical cycles that will override the circular cycles, and just this past week, we had Jupiter 90 degrees from Neptune, and that will cause gold and oil to rise, and – I was uncertain because my uh, monthly sine wave cycle goes down right to the end of the year. And as we know, Larry, markets just don't go straight down. They have to have some rallies. And I think we have an ad. Yeah, yeah, we do. We'll be right back with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. Bill, stay with us, please. Sure, of course. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Bill, um, on the oil market, do you want to tell us what you're, what you're looking at here? Yeah, well, I'll just run down this, this note, these... Uh, Okay. Items one through five. First of all, the technical formation of the oil price suggested a rally. We'll see that in charts one and two. And uh, oil lost more than 2.5% during the day in six out of 15 sessions. That's excessive. When you see that, that's what really clued me in. That decline is too extreme. And six months after such price, such developments over the last 30 years, oil was up in each case but once, and that was a 3% loss. So it just fell too far too fast. Mm -hmm. And now, the, what people will like, we'll see this chart. Number three, Jupiter was 90 degrees from Neptune, usually a low. The oil price responded, and so did the gold price. Jupiter and Neptune rule inflation and inflation hedges. And most people, when they start looking at planets, as I did in the 70s and you did, you think that a hard aspect is bad. 90 degrees is bad, makes things go down. No, not necessarily. You have to ha let the market tell you. That's why I invented software to tell us mm -hmm. that. And number four, sentiment. Hedge funds boosted their short bets by 46% the most since August on oil. And um, they're usually right. And if they're shorting, then that is, uh, excuse me, uh, they're usually incorrect. And so that's a contrary indicator. So they got heavily short after not shorting. They were not short at the top. They started shorting it. And at the, at the low, they are most heavily short. And the open interest put call call ratio has been dropping. So there more calls are being written by bearish traders who expect the price to decline so that they can collect the premiums on the expired calls. That's another contrary buy signal. So let's look at chart number one. Okay. You see that you see that first of all you had that big up day when it broke out of that little formation. That was around the 18th of June. And then you see higher lows in momentum. Then we'll run down to chart two which is weekly, and you'll note that it's at a 50% retracement level of one of the prior rallies. And look at the uh, look at the momentum, that green line turning up down below zero, so with higher lows. So that's another momentum buy signal. And then we go to chart three, and this is the interesting one. That is the average effect of a Jupiter-Neptune square with zero on the graph being the exact square. That's the effect on oil prices. Uh, that is, there are only five observations, and uh, oil has risen in four of five cases. We only have data going back to 83, so this is a little mm -hmm. bit 
thin, but I have much longer data on gold, and this is uh, mm -hmm. fairly consistent. Now, let's take that and superimpose it on the current price graph, and that's chart four. Okay. So there there you see the current oil price. And, uh, oh, this is really the this is really cool. Hold on just a second. This is really a cool one. Hold on. I like to see these overlays. Yeah. And for, for those folks out there, this is a, a, the whole cycle is about 13 years long, so you're only going to get one of these every 13 years. And by retrograde motion, you may wind up having three of them. And that's the reason it's so hard for standard researchers to pick these things up. If they don't use planets, they keep assuming that cycles are circular. Well, these cycles are elliptical. And these things can greatly disturb the sine wave cycles, which assume that prices are price cycles are circles so mm -hmm. so we have a, a counter trend rally here and um, I just wanted to go down and rerun I'm showing you this before but look at the S&P projection and that's based solely on sine wave cycles so I run these first then I go to the planets and see is there any major configuration that I have not looked at that would disturb this and the answer was no so right now you see the red sell signal the green buy signal was still on the buy signal and uh, mm -hmm. as far as i can see today is a projected turning point which means there are a lot of day counts from prior highs and lows that point to today and we're obviously running straight up mm -hmm. so monday tuesday there's probably going to be some degree of a pullback uh, but the trend is still up, and as far as I can see, we're probably going to go up here uh, into, you know, through July into August, and then have another pullback, and then one last rally. And as I used to say at Payne Weber, by the time it's done in December, you'll have to go to Yellowstone National Park to find a bear, because the sentiment, <laughs> will, be, the sentiment will be overwhelmingly bullish. Nobody will know where the high is, and then I think we have a two-year bear market in paper assets. Mm -hmm. Bill, we want to thank you for your – you were on last month, and you were very, very bullish on yellow metal gold. And my goodness, it's moved $100 an ounce since the last time you were on. We hit yeah. uh, 14 16 last night. What, what's your feeling here? We, yeah, it looks yeah. like here, – Here we have a real uh, conflict in, in the work because that graphs I just showed – I've just shown you on oil also applies to gold. Mm -hmm. But the all the other gold work points down, and the cycle's top this week. And so – question is which which is going to have the upper hand and you know when i tell people who are starting to do this type of research that uh it's not that easy when you see a cycle you can't just follow it blindly so occasionally they work perfectly for a while enough to mm -hmm. sort of entice you and then they'll go off um so right here we have the planetary the jupiter 90 to neptune uh, sending gold up and we have all the other work pointing down and so I've got to, you've got to decide between the two. And, uh, you know, I remember way back when I started this, I went over this with Arch Crawford and other people who got started in the early days and, and uh, said, you know, we're back where we started from. You've got uh, one, one um, indicator pointing up and the other one pointing down. And what do you do? And the general rule of thumb is that which happens less often generally you have, you have less examples. Like you've only got here for oil only five uh, those generally will override those that happen very frequently, like an annual cycle. How how often does an annual cycle happen? Well, every year. You know, how does gold behave in June? How does it behave? That, that happens every year. So something like this will override it for a period of time. So right now, I uh, if you have um, profits on gold, be happy. And on the first, you know, weekday coming up, I would uh, we when I mean week, I mean W E A K. Uh, I, I would check the sentiment, and I think it may be in about a week we're going to start back down. But um, mm -hmm. I don't see any major cycle lifting gold here. So, and uh, and again, my cycle on oil points down through the end of the year. So I think this is a temporary counter trend rally in oil. So I think the same thing about gold. Okay, boy, that certainly makes good sense. Bill, how can the folks uh, reach you? I mean, I, I, you don't, you know how much I enjoy having you on the show, and oh. I know the folks too. But uh, how do the folks reach you? Do you have a, you've got a special uh, website and email address, yeah. correct? And well, a, and yeah. a new book too. Well, it's BillMeridian.com is the website, or it's Bill at CyclesResearch.com is the email, and the last book was. Um, 
which one was the last one? It was um, the book about mundane astrology, which is mm -hmm. Mastering Geopolitical Prediction. And I mm -hmm. also wanted to add, if you remember months ago, I said that based upon the horoscope of U.S. Chinese diplomatic relations, mm -hmm. in other words, the first date, I think it was 1803, when they set up diplomatic relations, that this eclipse coming up in um, July falls in that chart, and I think very favorably for the U.S. So if you remember, I had said that the market was going to rally based upon the uh, solving of the trade mm -hmm. problem, and I think we're on course for that. Hey, Bill, thanks for joining us, my friend, and uh, travel safely home. Enjoy having you here. Try to come back and live more often here. <laughs> uh, I'm actually doing that. Good. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have an interesting time today because we have the summer solstice coming in at 11.54. Al, thanks for sending that to me. Al Pierce sent that along to me. Uh, so watch 11.54, and the reason why it's so important, you know, I work with artificial intelligence, and that's the time. 11.54 has nothing to do with the solstice, but it has to do with some other timing. So watch that time frame at 12 o'clock. If we're coming down into the stock market, it would be a good place for to see it rally. And if we're going up into 12 o'clock, it would most probably be a place to uh, take a look at it from the sell side. But watch 12 o'clock. That's in uh, – see, that's two hours. And the way you do that, you take 10 o'clock and you add two, and that gets you to 12. Actually, it's a two hours from exactly right now. 
9.55 Eastern Time. So uh, keep a close eye on that one. That's very interesting. I still believe we're, we've are we made some type of a top this week in these uh, notes and bonds just based on the drop in open interest. Uh, gold has certainly broken out extremely bullish. Uh, big open interest increases. Any pullback to, say, 13.75 would be, uh, I think that would look uh, look awfully nice because you'd have an ABCD pattern at that time. The for foreign currencies are uh, all over the map with the euro trading at 13, 113.30, uh, up well over 150 pips this week, making the U.S. dollar a little bit weaker, which makes our products more uh, acceptable to people that are under tariffs. So all that will figure in uh, somewhere as we walk through this. But watch this time today, folks. We're going we're gonna to talk about this on Monday because these are some of the key times that happened right during the time. And believe me, if the ancients wrote these on clay tablets that uh, Dr. Andrew Loeb reported about in his book, The Evolution of Technical Analysis, I think we should look at, especially today, the fact that we do have that summer solstice. And we should do the same thing on the equinoxes also. So keep a close eye on that stuff. And the main thing to do, folks, is live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless and do something nice for someone who has a whole lot less than you. And we'll try to catch you on the flip-flop on Monday without any major uh, corrections in the market. We'll be able to start afresh on Monday as we usually do.